Good morning, everyone. Today we have to read Acts chapter seven. It's a very good this chapter, and we can divide it into two big paragraphs. From verse one to fifty-three, because this is the sermon of Stephen and also his response, and fifty-four. To the end, the die of Stephen. His sermon is really, really long. Just now, Baraka asked a very interesting question. And we saw oh, so long the history, and I just want to see the the ending. And then we just see the ending is Stephen sleep. Maybe we 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 not understand the logic of Stephen, but actually this long sermon and long history actually is powerful. So we have to answer first question first. Why that the apostle they put into the prison? But how come this this time Stephen have to die? So what is the different? Actually, what they said that him is different. Before is they restrictly to prohibit them to not、uh, not say Jesus again. And then they say, I obey God, but not obey man. Is correct. So they only beat them and then deliver. Them again, but for this time it's different because last chapter we know that because Stephen he did great wonders and signs and and chapter six um verse nine actually they he. He did something and then make the synagogue of the free men angry. So actually, is some of the high important men that time. Stephen make those of the important men angry. That time. And offend them. Because he said that he. Because he said that he, he has heard him speak brainless word against Moses and God. That's why this really offend those、uh, synagogue of the free men. Because they charge、um, Stephen, actually he he、uh, brainless words against Moses and God. So this charge actually is is serious. And then Stephen did great wonders and signs. So it really offend the synagogue 
of the free men, and they want uh, Stephen to die. And they charge him is a serious one. When Stephen uh, sat in the council, he looked just as the face of an angel. And the high priest have to ask, are these things so? Because they want to know, is it really the truth? Just like at the court. And the high priest have to ask him. And then Stephen responded. And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen, the God of glory appeared to our fathers Abraham when he was in the Mesopotamia, before he drove in here and said to him, Get out of your country. When the high priest said, Are these things so? Are you really? Mesmerous words against Moses and God. But Stephen won't answer this question. He didn't answer the priest question directly, just like Jesus. Actually, many, just like Jesus, always respond with a question, but not answer that question directly. So you see that Stephen actually is full of wisdom and filled with Holy Spirit. But actually, Stephen is have a logic, and step by step, he want to answer high priest. If we first of all, he said about Abraham, it is an introduction, and afterwards you know that actually this sermon is very wonderful. If it is a sermon, it is, we have a topic. You say, actually, every topic is really the core matters to say to us to those Jews. This is a response and also a sermon. A response. And it tells about Abraham and leave the place and verse 4. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldean and drove in Haran, and from there, where his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which you not drove. And God gave him no inheritance in it, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to him it to him brought possession and to his descendants, descendants after him. But God spoke in the way that his descendants would draw in the foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them 400 years. And the nations to whom they will be in bondage and said, the father, they say, shall come out and serve me in the place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the twelve pet so, Stephen here say, I didn't do did anything against the temple because I know, I knew well about the history. And he say that I know Abraham. So what he telling is actually we have we are come from the same people. Your God is our is my God. Actually we are Abraham. We are brothers. We are come from the same. So that's why Stephen said begin from Abraham. So actually we are in the same boat. So actually when we leave this land of covenant because we are from the same patrols. 
and rose line and the petrol roots. Becoming envious, so sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and great trouble came over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and our fathers find no substance. But when Jacob heard that there were rain in Egypt, he sent our father and his second time Joseph was made known to his brothers and Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him 75 people so Jacob went down into Egypt and he died and he and our fathers and they he carried back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham bought from the son of Mani from the sons of Hamer, the family of Shechem. The Petrus become envious and sold Joseph into Egypt. So what is Stephen say? The Petrus actually is our Petrus. The problem is envious. So when the Israelites know, so he is saying, we actually our, we have a root of envious. Why that you have to court me? Because you ever is Jesus. How come they have to court Stephen? Because they ever is Stephen. Because those priests and those um, free men in the synagogue, they are envious. So that's why they want to kill me. So Stephen is using that history. Yes, you are Israel. You, you are the same because you just like the Petrus because you are envious. If they, they know, you know, actually Jesus is the Savior, Jesus is the Son of God, but because you are envious and you, you, you put him in the cross. So actually, who is wrong? Who against the words of God? Who is against God? But he is a, but God was with him. Even you sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him. Our Patroclus sold Joseph. And now we also sold Jesus. Also now you want to let me to die. Actually inside their heart is the envious. But Joseph, become the governor over the Egypt. So here, Stephen is talking about Joseph. Even you sold him, but our God just let him governor over Egypt. Just like now, you sold Jesus, but God will let him rule the earth. And say that they went to the Egypt two times, and the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers, and the Pharaoh know that they are Joseph's brothers, so all of them just go to Egypt, went to Egypt. 
。啊，最後咧，佢哋咧被誒誒帶到試驗咧埋葬喺阿拉文喺試驗所埋葬嘅。But at the end, they took the shaking. 嘅話咧，可能我哋會有一個疑問：咦，阿拉文埋嘅墳墓唔係喺希伯倫咩？唔係麥地拉洞咩？點解會？點解啲泥塊會撈亂咗呢個地方咧？咁，但係其實啲泥塊冇撈亂嘅嚇。喺誒以色列人嘅嘅口頭嘅傳説裏邊咧，啊阿拉文其實埋咗兩塊地。Abraham brought two land. One is Hebron, and he took his wife there. But afterwards, he also bought a land at Shechem. And Shechem actually is the is the place where Joseph took. Late in the tomb. 誒誒約瑟嘅嘅嘅嘅吩咐就係，當有一日以色列人咧進入迦南地、進入應許之地嘅時候，要將佢嘅遺體咧帶翻去咧誒呢個嘅誒誒應許之地嚟到安葬。所以後來咧，佢哋將約瑟咧就安葬在試劍呢個地方。And Joseph is laid in his tomb at the shaking. And this is a history. So is the Israelite going to have one problem of amphibious? And but when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. To another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man drew tremendously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. At this time, Moses was born and was well pleasing to God, and he was brought up in his father's house for three. Months, but when he was set up, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up at her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mightily in wisdom. These now, when he was forty years old, he came into his house to visit his brother, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffering, he defended Avram, he who was oppressed, and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that he brethren would have understood that God would deliver them. But his hand, but did not understand. And the next time he appeared to two of them as they was fighting and tried to reconcile them, saying, "Man, he, you are preferable. Why do you want?" But he who did labor wrong pushed him away, saying, "Who made you a ruler and judge over him? Do you want to kill me as you did and the Egyptian yesterday?" Then is the saying Moses read and became a judge in the land of Midian when he had two sons. And when forty years has passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of a fire of bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. Moses saw. It, he marveled at the sight, and as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, "I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and to the God of Jacob." And Moses tre trembled, and then Lord spoke. Then the Lord said to him, "Ascend of your feet from the place, and until verse thirty-six." The first paragraph say that is you have the root of the envious, and the second point, what Stephen wants to mention is verse thirty six. Israelites, you have the root that want to reject the Savior. When Moses arose, all of you, you know that the Israelites mounted to at each Egypt, and they become slaves. And even they want to kill all the baby, newborn baby, but because God saved them and keep Moses. And Moses learned everything from the Egyptians. He knew that he is he was he is. So he killed the Egyptians. So he killed the Egyptians. 
But he, and at the end, he who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Who? Who made you? in ruler and a judge over us. So here is telling about actually they reject Moses. They don't even think that Moses is sent by God. And 25. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. You see, this is how wonderful the sermon. Jesus is the one. They, he, they supposed you will understand that Jesus is the Savior when he died on the cross. So you have the root that you reject the Savior from God. You just see the past, the history. You, you think that you really obey to God? Actually, you reject Moses. Actually, you not obey to Moses. Moses is the one God chosen him, sent him to deliver those Israelites, but you reject. Actually, if not the, by the grace of God, you are now still at Egypt. And Moses see the fire in the bush. If this is, is not by the grace of God, actually no, no Moses cannot be your savior. And, and no salvation for the Israelites. Moses is the one you rejected. But God chose him and let him become the leader. So actually you're repeating the, 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 um, the problem. For nowadays, now you, are, you not see clearly. So, what Stephen talking about actually is parallel to nowadays what happened. Actually, they are against God and they repeat the problem of, of the path. willing of God. They don't understand. And they didn't learn from the past and they just repeat the problem, the wrong. So that's why when they heard the sermon of St Stephen, actually they are really angry. So that's why this chapter is really wonderful. And 37, this is that Moses was sent to the children of Israel. The Lord your God will rise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren and him you shall hear. This is that Moses who said, and Moses said, the Lord your God will rise up for prophet like me. So for here, suddenly he said that Moses said this. You really respect Moses. But actually, before you reject Moses, do you remember Moses said this? Moses said that God will rise up for a prophet like me. But today, you know that Jesus was rise up. Which um, who, who did many, many miracles like 
Jesus, but you forget, you really respect Moses. He said that there will be a prophet raised up. But do you really understand? Do you really remember that? In verse 38, this is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with her, our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey but rejected, and in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us scores to go before us. As for this Moses who brought us, out of the land of Egypt. We do not know what has became of him. And they made a craft in those days over sacrifice to the idol and rejoiced in the works of their work own hands. Then God turned and gave them up the worship the hosts of heaven. And it is written in the log of the prophets Did you over me slandered animals and sacrifice during 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You also took up the tabernacle of Mokla and the star of your good reverend emergence which you made to worship and I will carry you away up beyond Babylon so this paragraph is responding that they said that Stephen stepped on the words of God he said that Moses went up to the Mount Sinai received the words of God but those Israelite, they, they just over sacrificed to the idol. So that is who, who sin to God, actually, who offend to the words of God. Actually, it's those Israelites. Moses don't know because he is on the Mount Sinai. But those Israelites, they just worship the idols and make the cry and over to the idols. Even you have the tabernacle, even you have the the Moses, the commandment, but are you really obey the word? Are you really really follow the God's word? Suddenly, Stephen just represent God, and then he said, Did you over misland the animals and sacrifice during 40 years in the wilderness of house of Israel? So who not obey the law? It's you. And then verse 44 to 50, our fathers had a tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land processed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a drawing for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not drill in temples made with hands, as the prophet said, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? They said that Stephen does um, step on a temple, and he said that we have the tabernacle in the wilderness, and until the days of, Jack, uh, of David, and then he built the temple, built a house of temple, and at the end is so 
Solomon built him a house. But however, the Most High does not drill in temples made with hands. So they say that actually the God is bigger than the temple. Jesus is the Savior, is the Messiah. Actually, Jesus is bigger than the temple. You say that I step on a temple, but I want to ask you: Is the temple bigger or the God bigger? If Jesus is bigger than the temples, but you step on Jesus, you said me step on the temples, but you step on Jesus. That Jesus is the God. So how are you facing it? So it's just like it's speaking about the history, but actually is pinpoints nowadays their problem. And at the end, actually is the conclusion. So every history actually is responding to to them. And 51, you, Steve, lacked an uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. So you also, Steve, lacked an uncircumcised in heart and ears. So your heart, your ears actually is not open. You are stubborn. You are resist. You are rebellious. You always resist the Holy Spirit. You not obey the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. Everyone knows that. Holy Spirit is God. They know that they have to obey the Spirit of God, but you resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, and so do you. Your fathers, how your fathers, how your everyone did that, but you do the same. Because you you resist, you rebellious. Because we resist the Holy Spirit. We are rebellious. Actually, you are the same as before. And 52, which of the prophets did your fathers not prosecute? And they cured those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. And again, and he say, which of the prophets did your fathers not prosecute? Actually, all the prophets was prosecuted by Israelites. Israelites is special. When a prophet rose up, they will kill him, but after he died, they will, they will say that, oh, he really a prophet, and then he heard his word. So actually, Israelites always prosecute those prophets. Every prophet prosecuted by Israelites. So for today, Jesus is saying, also prosecuted by them. And so you are the one always kill those pro prophets. You are professional to kill those prophets. If the prophets say the savior have to come, then you will kill. But you are more professional because you the coming of the just one, and you became the betrayers and murderers. Now you cue the, the Savior, the Messiah. Before the past, they only cue the prophets. But today, you cue the just one. You cue the Messiah. So those Israelites, they're really, really angry. And 53, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. 
You have received the law by the violation of angels and have not kept it. So actually, who step on those rules? You, you receive the law from the angels. Actually, all the history and all the words of God is appointed to Jesus. But you kill Jesus. Why you kill all the prophets? You are the one received the rules of God, but you step on those rules, the words of God. So, and because he said like this, what they charge Stephen actually is serious. That's why Stephen have to speak it clearly and um, set a very strict. He really hoped that the Israelites can know that if this is the problem from their root, that is a problem from the past. And then at the end, 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they slashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand side of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him and with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. So, and they stoned Stephen, and he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then they, he kneeled down and cried out with a low, loud voice, Lord, the Lord charge them with the sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. They really, really angry. And grace at him with their teeth, and then stone him out of the city. So you see the, this judgment. Even priests, no need to say one word, and he didn't say anything. So just like this is a picture, those people actually only at the court actually haven't yet finished the judgment, but all the people go and stone him. But Stephen saw the heavens open, and he cried out, Receive my spirit, and do not charge them with the sin. So can you see this is two different pictures? They think that they are the leaders in the temple, but they are full of hatred, full of envious. But Stephen said, do not charge them with the sin. The one Stephen still pray with them, still pray for the murderers. It is a and here so also Stephen is really filled with Holy Spirit what he said is real what he said is really hit the, their heart and cut into the Israelite heart so for today for our ears are we really understand do we have any envious are we really hear God, obey God? Are we really follow God wholeheartedly? Stephen can die for God, but his eyes is open. What he saw is the eternal life. What he saw is in the heavens. He can see the Son of God standing in the heaven. Jesus was standing beside God. 
。今日我哋都要問自己，我哋所睇嘅係地上嘅，定係天上？你嘅恩典咧幫助我哋，讓我哋嘅眼睛咧可以打開，讓我哋嘅眼睛咧可以睇到天上。